What are the things that captivate you? Could it be a painting? Or maybe it's watching a movie like the Avengers Endgame? Maybe it's some beautiful scenery? Well, for me, it's actually watching the gears turn in a watch via open case bag, of course. To me, there's just something so interesting, so captivating about watching everything in motion. Today's watch not only has a great open case bag, it is also what I would consider an icon to all watch collectors everywhere. And just in time for the 50th anniversary of the NASA moon landing, I'm reviewing none other than the Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch. So let's get into it. The watch you see here today is actually bought way back in 2012 and it is in absolute immaculate condition. It sits at 42mm on the wrist and for this model it actually has sapphire glass instead of hasselite. So the only thing that you should take note for now is that the sapphire actually sits closer to the wrist than hasselite. So knowing that this watch sits closer to the wrist is actually great news for me because I'm someone who is very prone to banging their watches on just about any surface you can think of. I also like the fact that it has sapphire which protects against scratches better than hasselite. Also, if you are somebody who wears business shirts or formal wear all that often, then you'll be happy to know that this watch actually fits under the cuff very, very easily. Although, I would say that the Speedmaster is a little bit too sporty for formal wear. I would actually suggest maybe the Omega Deville to be a better choice. So, I don't know about you, but I think that the Speedmaster looks absolutely amazing on the bracelet. Although, if you're actually open to the suggestion, Omega actually does sell a couple of great quality NATO straps. The one that you see here is actually a NATO strap with Cordura finishing. And I mean, I wish that I could actually share with you how it feels like because guys, it feels nothing like the cheap NATO straps that you can find just about anywhere online. This is the real deal and of course, you'll be dropping some pretty serious amounts of cash for it. We're talking about 150 US dollars. But if you are willing to spend that kind of money on a strap, I don't think you will ever regret it because no, no, definitely no buyer's remorse here guys. I mean, I've tried it and it is literally jaw dropping. So if you if you know somebody who works at an AD in Omega, just, just have them, you know, have them just give it, to, give a strap to you and just touch it for a bit and, and you'll see what I mean. Seriously guys, just do it. Okay, so let's talk about the doll and the readability, right? So the doll is black and the hands are white. So that makes a pretty good contrast for reading the watch at a single glance. And I kid you not, I mean, your eyes are gonna get so accommodated to the way the watch looks in just like that. Right? So no worries about readability, although for me, I would actually prefer maybe getting a Speedmaster that is a little bit more vintage, it has a little bit more patina, because I actually prefer to have a little splash of maybe light yellow or dark yellow uh, against black. I feel that would make me stand out more and it's a little bit more interesting to see than the usual you know, black on white. But if you're somebody who prefers your watches brand new, then no problems, you know? I mean, just go for it. It looks great, it looks amazing, it functions well. So there's really no harm in getting it brand new. Okay, so moving on to the doll. You can actually see that you get a black doll with white hands. So readability is really no problem. This is an easy one glance watch. Even the tachymeter that is on the bezel is very easy to read if you actually happen to use it. For me though, I would prefer the hands to be a little bit more patina and maybe go a little bit more light yellow to dark yellowish against the black doll. I actually think that this would maybe separate me from the rest of the brand new Speedmasters and it's a little bit more interesting to, to look at. But hey, if you prefer white on black, then whatever floats your boat, am I right? The other thing worth noting is that if you are an open case bag guy like I am, then you have to get the Sapphire version, which comes after the Hasselite version and is updated with the 1863 caliber movement. Now, whichever ones you decided to get in the end, it's really up to you. You have to weigh the pros and cons between Sapphire and Hasselite 
steel case bag, open case bag, as well as going the path of the traditional 1861 caliber movement or the more newer 1863. Whatever you decide on though, you're never on the losing end because this is Omega we're talking about. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a few moments here to show you how amazingly stunning the view behind the open case bag really is. You can see all the gears moving individually and this has given me so many eye gasms in the, in the past one day that I've been reviewing this watch. Take a look for yourself and also if you start and stop the chronograph, you can actually see a little metal thing kind of move in between and unfortunately though I wasn't able to film this uh, when before returning it to the owner. Ultimately, the Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch is an amazing watch from Omega. Just remember though, it doesn't have great water resistance, so I would advise against swimming or doing any kind of water activities with it. It also cannot withstand any hard knocks or hard balls hitting it, so games like baseball and cricket are best reserved for the Jeju Lacoon Reverso kind of watches. Keep the Speedmaster as it is, alright? Just away from any obvious dangers and you should be good to go for a very long time to come. And if you're a space geek like myself, then knowing the watch has the first watch on the moon written on the open case bag's uh, outer ring is an extra boon for you, just like it, it is for me. So maybe I asked this earlier in the... So maybe I already asked this question earlier, but let me ask it again. If it were you, or if you already own a Speedmaster, which one would you prefer or did prefer in the end? The Hesolite version or the Sapphire? Patina or non-patina? Let me know in the comment section and I will see you next time.